Both of these minis were printed with the same 3D printer. The difference was how they were supported. One of them used traditional slicer supports and the other used custom resin supports. Can you tell which is which? Well, that's what today's video is all about and you'll wanna stay tuned. I think some results might surprise you. So, let's get to it. Hello, my name is Danny, the 3D Printing DM, and welcome to 3D Printed Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things 3D printing for your tabletop games. The purpose of today's video is to try using manually placed resin supports on FDM 3D printed miniatures and testing them against slicer generated traditional supports with a slicer like Kira. If this does work in theory, then we might solve a lot of the pain points that come with traditional slicer supports. Now that was a lot of 3D printing jargon. So if you're new or you're lost, well, don't worry. We're gonna start by explaining some of this. In fact, let's go. Whoa, 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 what is this? Dude, who cares? Just show me the results. Really the reason this matters at all is that 3D printed miniatures printed in FDM uh, that require supports kind of have a reputation. They have a reputation for being fragile, for breaking when you're trying to remove supports, sometimes failing completely even though you are overzealous with the support settings. Or maybe the supports are so rock solid on your mini that support removal is almost impossible. To the point that there's a whole sub niche of companies who make and sell supportless miniatures and people are willing to pay a little bit more money for them because they don't have the trouble of dealing with supports. But what if we could solve some of those pain points by using custom resin supports, eliminating a lot of that extra material and targeting the areas that need support while the rest of the mini just prints on its own. Sounds really nice, right? And thus this video was born. <laughs> Now I started to experiment with this form of supporting during our Kickstarter, The Lost Adventures, in an effort to try and provide minis that don't need any slicer supports, while still maintaining the dynamic poses that I love. I had initial success with these custom resin prints on a few models, but I decided to test this using a wider array of them. In other words, more difficult models, because I wanted to see if this method would have widespread application. And if you could try doing this on your own, a full disclosure, almost all of the minis that you see here and that you'll see throughout the video are from that Kickstarter, The Lost Adventures, which only has a few more days left as of the release of this video. So if you're interested or want to support the channel, check it out in the links below. And before we get into our semi-scientific methods, it's time to get into semi-scientific attire. <laughs> Much better. Let's first talk about some of the questions that we're trying to answer here. We want to see if these resin supports work for FDM prints at all, or if we get failures. We're trying to see if it'll save on material. We're trying to see if it'll save on time. And we're trying to see if the quality and the finish is better or significantly more noticeable. Here's how we're going to find the answer to these questions today. We're gonna to use the same exact 3D printer for every single one of them. It's an almost stock Ender 3 with uh, an Illuminate extruder. We're gonna use the same exact profile, which is a stock Fat Dragon Games miniature profile. And this is just another miniature profile in the community outside of SciPy. I'm using it because it's one of the most popular go-tos when somebody is starting. It's a faster profile than the SciPy profile and I needed speed for this. And since it's so popular, I thought it'd be a good place to start and a good profile file to just test. I'm also using eSun PLA Plus because it's a, a filament that is recommended by Tom, the guy who made the FDG profile. I'm using the same version of Cura, which is 4.0. I know I haven't upgraded, don't kill me. And really nothing has changed between any of these prints except for the supports and how we generate the supports. We either use Cura's auto-generated supports and I use the support settings that are in my support settings video, which you can see at the end of the video, you can click on the link, or I use custom generated supports in Chitu Box. And I'm just using regular heavy supports, no special base. All of these things, you can you can see them pretty easily in Chitu Box, they're, they're pretty standard.
There are some people that uh, use Mesh Mixer, have used Mesh Mixer for a long time for their custom supports. I tried it and I never really uh, got it. I, I tried so many times and my supports usually ended up looking like this. And it just, it just it never worked for me when I tested this. So Chitu Box made a lot of sense for me. So that's what I'm using for today's experiment. Why do I list all this? Basically, like with a real experiment, we're just trying to rule out as many hardware or software or just any external issues that it could be. So if there is gonna be some type of failure in this prints or quality differences, we can generally expect them to be in all of the tests and we can at least say, well, that variable was consistent, but still try and answer the other questions that we have as objectively as possible. All right, let's take this off. Here we go. <laughs> okay, now before we jump into testing, I know that some of you might be new to 3D printing and I wanna talk to you for a second about the difference between resin supports and traditional slicer supports. This is definitely gonna be obvious to some of you, but, but just hang tight, we will get to the testing in just a bit. Traditional slicer generated supports look like this in the slicer and like this coming off of the printer. They almost always generate more support material than they really need and they're famous for being very difficult to remove. After removal though, you can still end up with some pretty nice FDM minis like you can see here. Now resin generated supports look like this in the slicer and they look like this coming off the printer. Of course, this is a resin print that you're looking at, but you can see that this works by finding all of the overhangs and pre-supporting them with a single contact point with these long vertical supports. It's a very different method of supporting your print and are generally very difficult to print on an FDM printer. It's why you see lattice cubes being considered stress test, right? Because on FDM printers, it can lead to print deformities, failures, and stringing, and when you're trying to solve for those issues and troubleshoot for those issues, it's a great stress test, which is one more reason why most people don't use this type of support for FDMs and why my mesh miss results we're probably pretty scattered because it's not meant for FDM printers. Okay, I think that's enough context. Let's get some test prints going and check out the results. Three days later. All right, printing is done. Here is our control group. Let's take a closer look at these real quick. You'll see there's definitely some deformities in the profile. Notice the tip of the spear here started to bubble up either from a lack of cooling or laying it down too quickly. And I also had a way more stringing than I would have liked, even on the non-supported areas. Notice the helmet and the staff. The retraction settings and temperature settings are one of those factors that you have to change pretty much from printer to printer, regardless of the profile you get. So. These are things that would probably help both of these issues. Not so much the, uh, someone with a higher print quality standard would probably fine tune it to remove a lot of those extra blobs that are in the print that aren't related to the support material. I am what you might call a tabletop standard printer, which means if it's good enough, it's good enough. I'm not going crazy about the perfect print or the perfect print quality. I don't like spending hours tinkering with my printers. So if it's good enough, it's good enough. And for the sake of this experiment, as long as the errors and issues are consistent across both sets, then generally I can rule that out as something that can be tweaked later. And here's our variable test group with the customers and supports, supports still on. After printing these, I thought to myself, I can't show these on the channel. These are a pretty bad print, <laughs> even by my normal standards. So I thought, okay, maybe it's the retraction settings. Maybe I'm having retraction issues. Let me do a stringing test. That's right, that's where I start when that starts happening. And look at this. So I decided to just keep going because like I said, yes, we want to focus on quality, but there were a lot of other questions posed at the beginning and we can rule these out and just keep moving forward. And for the sake of the experiment, I still think it was worth it. My only hope at this point was to clean these up as much as possible and then do a comparison side by side after sport removal and cleanup. 
And I'm gonna put them side by side up once again and a little bit closer this time. So you can really see all the imperfections here. Can you tell which is which? By the end of it all, in my opinion, there actually wasn't too much difference unless you looked really closely, like with a macro lens, like you're looking at it right now. Even I was actually pleasantly surprised with how these custom residency prints turned out after all was said and done. But let's talk about this for a second though. Based on what we're seeing, I think we can draw some conclusions that would be valuable to you when you start trying to do this on your own. Do these custom resin sports work? Do they support the FDM miniatures? Yes, they do work for, for these 50 millimeter miniatures and below that I tested to some extent. There was a lot less failures than I had originally anticipated. And I think a lot of that is because I made these very straight supports that connected together at the base and with the base of the mini usually, which meant a lot less chance for the support structure to detach from the bed which is normally the issue that I've gotten with these kind of very tall, straight resin supports. They also did a really good job of supporting the overhangs that I had them supporting. This was extra obvious because you can see the scarring visibly on the areas where the resin supports were, and you can't really see the visible scarring a lot of the times. It's not as noticeable for the traditional supports. In some cases, if you support in an area that's very visible, even with the coat of primer and sanding, uh, it, it might be extra visible and it might be a little bit more noticeable than a regular support area with traditional support. So just be aware of that. Do they use less material? Yes, but it's a negligible amount. It's like one gram of filament difference. Pretty insignificant. We're talking cents here, pennies. So not a big deal. Do they print faster? No, they usually don't, but we're talking about a difference of 30 minutes, which sure it adds up over time, but the way I print generally is like in eight hour periods because it's, you know, between work and stuff like that. So it really wasn't very noticeable to me and I didn't mind it at all. The big question is, do they produce a better product, a better finish? Is it better quality? Most of the time, no. My finish of the traditional supports was usually better. But a lot of that had to do with the profile and the profile being made to not use this type of support. If you tweaked your settings for this and made your retraction settings and things like that to, to use this type of support, I am convinced that you could get as good of a finish if you really wanted to, as long as the mini was supported in all the areas that it needed to be supported. And as long as you did the following, which is, made sure you chose the right minis for this type of support. I don't think that this is gonna be a good strategy for every single mini out there. And what I mean by that is the following. In order for a mini to be a good candidate for this type of support, I think that the overhangs have to be in areas that can easily be taken care of, either on a very open part of the base that can be trimmed very easily or completely off the base. Now, in some cases, you still can do this with harder minis, for example, this goblin. And, and, and like I mentioned, there is a lot of leftover material on the, on the base, but it can double as pebbles in this case, and you still get a really cool dynamic support to mini in a single print that just requires a little bit of cleanup. And to me, after a lot of time printing minis with traditional supports, I, if you had told me this was printed with regular supports, I would have believed you. Now let's be very open here. It is uh, undeniable that the test results that we had were unacceptable. The amount of stringing was bad, very bad. And the print quality really suffered as a result. It was so bad, I wasn't able to get some of it off and it just stayed. This just isn't good for me. Look at the handle and compare these two handles together. And you can see like no amount of snipping will fix this handle. It's just gonna look bad, even with the little bit of warping that I got when I used the heat gun. On top of that, these were printed using the FDG profile, a stock FDG profile that wasn't modded, that wasn't tuned. So it's not the profile's fault. It's just one of the limitations of the way we did this experiment. And I did it this way because I wanted to test what a regular, a newbie come in and trying this would get and what they would experience like and whether it would be something that would be passable by my standards. Now, what about you? If you're gonna give this a shot and experiment on your own, which I think you should, 
you should try this because it's a great exercise to see if you get supports, okay? Just be prepared to work on your attraction settings a little bit to tweak a profile for this type of print or just be ready to do a little bit of cleanup if you're trying this on a harder print. You'd probably be surprised this works very well on, on prints that need minimal supports. Finally, I wanna say one thing. I don't think that standard supports are really all that bad. In fact, with the right settings, I think they're much better than where we were one year ago, right? At least for me. <laughs> and depending on the mini, I think that we found a decent alternative that doesn't require knowing all of Blender or ZBrush or something that anybody can use to try to get a little bit easier prints, at least in some cases. If you're interested in the traditional support settings that I used, yes, those settings are wonderful. Yes, I love them. And you can check them out at the video that's at the end of this video where I go through those settings in detail. And if you enjoyed this video, want to support the channel, Check out our Kickstarter below. It is live for a few more days, but if you've seen this video after the fact, I'm sure you'll be able to find how to get the Kickstarter there later when you visit that link anyways. Come check it out. We got minis, terrain, props, maps, adventures, all the stuff that you might be interested in if you're interested in printing miniatures for your tabletop games. And that is down in the description as well. Thanks again for watching, happy printing, and happy gaming.